This is code.org, and we're going to write the method signature for the paint line string color method. So that's the parameter. Keep in mind. Let's head over here. Method signatures, guys. Quick reminder. Uh, when you sign your name, guess what you sign? Wait for it. Wait for it. Your name. Huh? All right. So that's what a method signature is. We got to put the name of the method down here. Now, we need to tell the computer what the access is and if it's going to return something. That's fancy stuff we don't totally dive into just yet, but use your references, right? Look, we have a lot of examples right here. That's basically what we're going to do. Public void for this guy, and then paint, paint line is the name of it. I'm not, they give it to us right there. And then a parameter, we're going to let them pass a string. A string is just a word, keep that in mind, or a sentence or something like that. We're just saying they can tell us a color here. So string, color, curly brackets, enter. Cool. Inside the paint line sh string color method, use your pseudocode from writing algorithms to write the Java code for painter plus object to paint a horizontal or a vertical line using a specific color as long as there's no obstacles. So let's head over to this doc, right? Hopefully you have seen and completed this already. Pseudocode, I've hit upon this before, but one more time, guys, super important. It's a real thing in the professional world at Google or at Amazon. Programmers will get together and brainstorm sometimes in pseudocode and critique and help each other or develop large applications. So this isn't just kid stuff. All that being said, I like to show and test students as I go through some thoughts. So I need to know what this does. Paint method should paint a horizontal or vertical line using a specified color. Yep. And there's their example. That makes sense. Cool. So how am I going to do this? I'm actually going to develop it in my neighborhood. Because like I said, I want to see what works and what doesn't as I go. Then I move it over here. All right, let's give this a shot. So they want us to paint a line. First, I'm going to need to take all this paint, which it looks like if this does, and if yours doesn't work, you need to go back and do that section. I have a tutorial if you're stuck. Yep, we took all the paint. Cool. So that is done. Now what we need is to start painting. Well, we know how to do that, right? My painter plus or my painter is what we've traditionally done. But painter plus can do everything painter can do because of extend. So right here, if you look, where's my paint? Paint, right? We've done this a bunch. Oh, and notice there's a parameter for color, right? So my painter plus dot paint. And then, uh, sure, I think their example, no, their example had green, didn't it? I want green. Cool. All right. So this is just going to paint one square. Boom, right? Okay, well, we need to paint a whole line. All right, so. All right, look, I did. It. I can paint a line now. Students, don't do this. It will give me a heart attack or whoever your teacher is. Don't, don't do it. If you copy and paste in code, you probably can find a better way, right? So, yep, this paints a line. But we have seen now how to use a while loop. And let's do a quick refresh on a while loop. It works like an if statement, except it repeats. So... For example, let me throw an if statement down here. And since I know we're going to move to be painting, right, obviously, I'm going to first say if, and that's what I'll check, right? Because I don't want to end up moving forward and smacking myself into a wall. So if, let me magic myself over here again. Okay, so it looks like we start painting immediately, right? Notice this first square is painted, but we still want to know if we can move. Because just painting one dot is not a line. Okay, cool. So let's head back. All right. If my painter plus can move. And we're going to check that because we know, hey, we need to move. We're painting a line. Bam. All right. So if we can move, what do I want to do? Well, apparently I'm going to paint that square I started at. So. Cool. And now what? Well, now I want to move, right? We've seen this. All right, let me get rid of these guys. And let's see how this goes. 
perfect. We did one square. And that's what we would expect because an if statement, we're asking the computer, hey, computer, can my painter move? Yes, true, right? We're standing right here, you can move. Therefore, the computer has to run this code. The second the if statement is false, it doesn't. It drops below and runs anything else. But if the if statement, when we get here, was false, it does not run any of this. It's not allowed. And again, it runs the stuff below. There's the distinction between a while loop. A while loop repeats. So it like, it's like an if statement in that it has to check if this is true. Now, if we get here and this is not true, none of this code ever runs, just like it would an if, and it drops below. However, if we get here and this is true, it has to check it again. So we got here, this is true. Therefore, we have to run this code, like an if statement would, my painter plus dot paint green slap, and then we have to move. We hit the bottom, and unlike an if statement that would keep running, zoop, now we have to check it again. While, or as long as my painter plus can move, the computer says can't move, I don't know, zoop, oh yeah, 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 you can step forward, okay, so that's true, okay, paint green, move forward, smack, right, zoop, hit the bottom, oh wait, this isn't an if, it's a wall. As long as my painter plus can move, so we have to check again, and we'd stand here, roughly, and hey, can we still move? Yep, that would be true, so this is true, and we paint it again. And then we move. We hit the bottom. Zoop, again. Hey, can we still move? Yep, we could. Paint, move. Zoop, over here maybe? I don't even know. Can move. Still true. Paint, move. Bloop. And once we get here, that is when this will stop running, right? So once we are at this point, wall, my painter plus can move. So we hit the bottom once we're standing here and it goes, okay, hey, computer, can the painter still move? False, right? If we're standing here, this would be false. Finally, it's done. It's done checking. It does not run that code inside, which is great, because if it did, we'd move into a wall or try to. And it's done, and it runs the stuff below. But uh Cool. So now we need to move this over, right? Let me cut that. Chop. And I can get rid of some of the extra lines I added for testing this. And let me head over here. We already have our paint line signature. I'm going to do paste. And now what I do need to change though is a few things, right? We don't have access to this object. We have access to Painter Plus directly, right? We're in Painter Plus. We have access to all the painter methods. We don't need this. Since we are in the class directly, we don't need to reference my Painter Plus object, especially since the object only exists right here because this is where we instantiate it but we can run everything directly. Now, we also don't want to do paint green, and that's because we want to give them the option to do other colors, right? So to do that, we don't write the word green in here, and we don't write the word string. String only goes up here to tell the computer we're expecting a word. Here, we just write the name of the variable, which is color, or the name of the parameter. All right, that's all looking good. Let's test this. And now we'll do orange. I don't know. Do something creative. My painter plus paint line orange. Perfect. Ta-da! Onward.